What is the next phase for President Cyril Ramaphosa's crisis, the Pada Pada saga? And yes, that's how you pronounce it right. Let's get going. Spread the fire, welcome back to SMWX, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at the political crisis that engulfs President Ramaphosa. Now, in this episode, I'd like to cover three main topics. The first is the recent statements that have been made by various figures in South African society about the Pada Pada saga. Uh, secondly, I'd like to speak about what's happening in Parliament and look at the parliamentary strategy to hold the president accountable and then finally, I'd like to look at the way that the South African media has gone rather silent on this question and the need to keep this at the foreground of our political conversation because of its importance and centrality to our constitution and our democracy. So let's get started with the first part of this video, which is dealing with some of the recent statements that have been made about the Pada Pada saga and crisis. Now, the president's farm became a magnet for political controversy when it was alleged that anywhere upwards, maybe downwards, of $4 million was stored in various articles of furniture and the cover-up of that after a robbery. You know the story, it's everywhere. Now, this was a major media story for about two weeks, but things have slowly been subsiding on the presidential accountability front. And we need to keep our eye on this ball. In fact, I'm going to keep doing a series of videos on this question all the way through until it reaches its conclusion, whatever that might be. But I wanted to speak about two things. First, Mavuso Msimang, who is an ANC veteran, someone who spoke out very critically against the Zuma administration, but someone who is also viewed as if there is such a thing in South African politics anymore, a kind of moral center for South African political thought. And very interestingly, recently, still as a member of the ANC, someone who speaks out publicly called for the president to step aside because of the major question marks that linger over this saga. And so I thought it was fascinating to see someone of that status someone who really has nothing to gain by making these calls and actually has a lot to lose, and someone who has actually been seen maybe as being supportive of the Ramaphosa administration, actually coming out and making a very bold and, and brave, in my view, uh, call for the president at least to step aside because of the way that this saga has, has played out and because of the major questions that it has posed. We also had a favorite of this channel, Ukoko Aubrey Machikli, taking to SABC, saying the same thing, echoing the words of Mavuso Msimang and saying that he agrees with him, that this is so serious that it actually calls for the president either to step down or at least, at the very least, to step aside from his ANC responsibilities. So what we're seeing, based on what these two veterans in many ways have said, is a shift seems to be taking place where previously we had a very strong block in support of President Ramaphosa. I think the internal dynamics in the country but also in the ANC are beginning to shift against the president. Now the extent to which that shift may be fatal for his political career remains to be seen but we're starting to see many more voices that may have been on the sidelines or may have been waiting to see how this plays out, actually becoming more bold. And I think as we head towards the ANC's policy conference at the end of July currently build, and as we go towards its elective conference, it seems that the confidence which the Ramaphosa camp may have gone into, with which they may have gone into uh, these major ANC meetings, may be significantly dented by people starting not only to say that you know, this is serious, but actually calling for the president to relinquish, even if temporarily, maybe even permanently, the office.
So in part two, I want to come to the question of parliament, because as people make public statements, there's also uh, a theater playing out in the parliament of South Africa. And the question is, how will parliament use its position of preeminence in the South African constitutional landscape to make sure that the highest office holder, the president, is held accountable, or at least is made to explain himself to the South African people. And there are many things moving. By the way, catch uh, my interview with the EFF national spokesperson, Sinawa Tambo, who speaks about the EFF strategy in parliament. But there are really three things happening. The ATM, the African Transformation Movement, is pushing for a Section 89 inquiry, which effectively rela relates to the impeachment of the president. That's the most serious way that you can remove a president from office. On the other hand, you have the EFF, which is calling for a motion of no confidence in the president, and they're seeking to unite opposition parties around a motion of no confidence. And there, in a motion of no confidence, you only need 51% of the members of parliament to vote in the direction of the motion for the president to be removed. Whereas with the impeachment proceedings, uh, which we mentioned just earlier, you need a two-thirds majority. So a motion of no confidence is easier to do than an impeachment. And then we've got a third set of scenarios playing out where the DA wants to establish an ad hoc committee. That just means a committee that's established for a special purpose in Parliament, and they want that committee to look specifically at this question of the Para Para saga. So we have many different balls in the air in Parliament, but what's holding it back really is the Speaker of the National Assembly is dragging her feet, sadly, on making sure that these inquiries and these processes get up and running. And quite frankly, I think it's time for people to start agitating and putting public pressure on Parliament to get to the bottom of this crisis, because it's not about whether one likes the president or not, but just having someone at the head of the state over whom there are clouds uh, brewing is a problem for the democratic process, and we need Parliament to play its role in holding the executive accountable. So the third part of this video is really about the South African media, because as I feared and I dare say predicted in some earlier videos on this channel, it seems that an eerie silence has suddenly descended around this question. Yes, there were a few headlines in the opening weeks, but to be quite frank, the South African media, editors, those who determine the agenda, with some exceptions, and I must I actually think the SABC has done a notable job of keeping this at the forefront, but in many cases, I think this question has gone to the back of the media agenda for a number of reasons. Look, to be fair, there's a lot going on in the country and uh, not all of it necessarily helps the president. There's load shedding, there was the state capture report, there's former president Zuma, so a lot is going on just at the political level. But we have to keep our eye on this ball. We can't allow uh, a media narrative which essentially favors the president by allowing him to stay silent and pretend that everything is fine when we all know that there are questions to be answered. And I think there is a question of consistency here because South Africa was very harsh and very hard on former President Jacob Zuma, rightly so in my view, and I was one of the critical voices uh, calling for accountability. But we can't be accountable for some politicians and then leave others to their own devices. And so I think it is crucial and to circle back to um, Mavusom Simang, we need to hold all politicians, whoever they are, who hold the highest office to the highest standards of accountability. And I get worried when the media takes its eye off the ball and its foot off the pedal. So I'm calling out for you viewers to make sure we keep this item at the top of the agenda and we continue discussing it. And that's why I'm going to keep talking about it, quite frankly, until the cows or the angole come home. Make sure you subscribe to SMWX, like, share. We've got a new feature where you can drop a tip via super thanks. So you can just see next to the like button, there's a little heart with a dollar sign. Give us some pala pala dollars. Like give us some para para money. We also want some couches up in here in SMWX. You know, hook us up. Hook us up with the super thanks. Become a member, watch the bonus content. I hope you're enjoying the new look and feel. Shout out to the team behind the camera. Aye, aye, aye.